Uh, great overview, Luda, and thank you for mentioning Tax 788 because clearly, you know, response rates much, you know, wasn't presented at ASCO, but response rates of 40 to 45 percent, median PFS of around seven to eight months. How do you, outside of these drugs, are not uh, ready for prime time in the clinic yet? How do you, how do you treat patients currently that are EGFR exon 20? So if I don't have an access to the study and no site within a driving distance has an access to the study, um, it is chemotherapy, platinum double. Uh, Becca, your thoughts on these drugs and where, they, where they're heading and in general, what you do for patients um, with EGFR exon 20, and I'll put you on the spot. When you're using chemo for these patients, do you use immunotherapy? Do you use <laughs> bevacizumab? Do you just do chemotherapy? Um. Yeah, so great questions. Uh, you know, it is heartening to see some movement in Exxon 20 because for a long time, you know, it was just, oh, we have an EGFR mutation and then, oh, it's Exxon 20. And so it was really hard not to be able to offer good options to these patients. So having some drugs um, like the J&J &J and the TAC-788 um, that have um, some nice signals of activity um, is, is very heartening. I use chemotherapy. Um, as much as possible, I try to put patients on clinical trials. And for that reason, I, I, you know, I tend to avoid immunotherapy. In general, the immunotherapies have shown less activity in never smokers with driver mutations. And um, there is this concern about um, increased toxicity, especially if you're doing IO followed by a TKI um, because of the long half-life of the IO um, and concomitant toxicities. And so to avoid that with the thought that perhaps they would be going on a study of a TKI, I tend to reserve IO until very, very late in the course um, to be able to kind of avoid toxicity issues like that. Josh, your, your approach to patients that are, you were involved, I know, uh, senior author for the J&J &J drug, at least at the time of presentation at ASCO a couple years ago. Um, any, any thoughts on you know, your, your experience, number one, with this drug, uh, and then number two, how you treat patients off trial? Yeah, so I think that uh, amivantamab has, I, I've been impressed with the if efficacy of the drug, as well as the relative tolerability of it. That it, first day infusion reaction is sort of a dramatic episode. So the first dose is administered over two days. Um, patients have it, and then it goes away. It's been relatively safe. Um, the the multiple drugs that exist, I think we have to consider the pros and cons of each, right? So amivantamab is a gigantic uh, bispecific monoclonal antibody, so it's not going to have CNS penetration. That is a limitation of that drug. Um, in contrast, if you look at the toxicity profile of TAC-788 and poziotinib, it's significant. I mean, we saw the data with poziotinib presented at ASCO, but even TAC-788 has substantial amounts of mucositis, it has diarrhea. These are real limitations from these drugs, but there you get more, you're more likely to get CNS penetrance. So it's, it's a balance issue. Um, my approach has been to generally use chemotherapy. Sometimes I will incorporate immunotherapy. There's some retrospective data indicating that patients with an exon 20 insertion are more likely than others with EGFR mutation to respond to immunotherapy. And in addition to that, because um, I'm less concerned about the cross-reactivity of immunotherapy with amivantamab, and that's the trial that I have at my institution. Um, I'm more likely to use immunotherapy in that space. Okay. Interesting space. And I guess, again, time will tell how these drugs all shake out. You know, I, I have used osimertinib at 160 off trial, haven't been encouraged uh, by the results. And I think we saw some reasonable um, uh, response rates and tolerability, but certainly I think there are other drugs uh, uh, like J and J drug and the uh, mopacertinib that may take uh, uh, the lead in treating these patients. I would say off a trial, I, I generally fall into the camp of, of, of chemo uh, uh, with, with bevacizumab um, based on very little data. Um, but that's generally what I offer, but I can't uh, dispute immunotherapy and chemotherapy also being used for these patients.